Thank you so much for that introduction. Thank you, Chancellor Manukin, for inviting me to this stage. And thank you all for just brilliant uh, presentations. When I uh, looked at the prompt, um, one of the first questions I asked myself was, what makes me a badger? Do I even sound like one? <laughs> What makes me a badger? I really was trying to answer that question. Should I have graduated from here? Is that a part of what creates the badger? Or is it attached to my story and the work that I do here? So I decided I'll just share my story and see if indeed I am a badger. I was in Jamaica, I grew up in Jamaica on the north coast of Jamaica. So if you see the postcards of Ocho Reyes, that's where I grew up, the postcards are real, it is that beautiful. Um, and I was at a hotel, the Jamaica Grand, I was waiting on some friends, we had a performance that evening. And I was sitting in the lobby, there was a book on a coffee table next to me. I picked it up, I opened the book. And it was describing dance as art. I am here to do a dance performance. This is what we do. This was some side money. What do you mean dance is art? Dance is culture. Dance is how I center my identity in school. Dance is how I challenge you at recess. Dance is how I tell you that I know where I stand as a cultural being in this space. What do you mean dance is art? So I'm scanning through this book, but folks arrived, so I stole it. And, um, <laughs> It became a Bible of sort. And I went to my advisor, my, my voice teacher, and I said, um, I found this book, found this book. And it, it tells the story of dance as art. This is what we do. We do dance, we do theater. But here is talking about these transformative experience. And what is this co-curricular link? And what do you mean you can use dance as a mode of education to teach? What do you mean? And he says, well, there's this magical place in Kingston, Jamaica, called the Edna Manley College. So in my head, if you read Harry Potter, this is you describing Hogwarts to me, right? But that book, and why it is part of my Wisconsin story, was written by Margaret Dobler. And Margaret Dobler is the founder of the dance program here. The dance program here is the first dance program on a university campus else anywhere. That was founded in 1926. So the environment that Dobler was working in was encouraging these questions. And beyond the findings here, what do we do with this? And so folks, I talk about the Wisconsin idea formed locally, transforming, transferring globally, and then taking on local identities in a new place. Because when I showed up at Edna Manley College to say, hey, Hogwarts, I hear this is where this magic happens. And the first syllabus I was looking at was citing this book. We all got copies of different chapters. I had the book. So not only now I was in an institution where I was reinforcing these ideas that inspired me to go to that institution in the first place, right? This, this idea of documenting scholarship, documenting findings, and sharing that in a way that others can access it was very real for me. What it meant was that I was very familiar with the W of University of Wisconsin Press. It meant that wherever I saw that on a shelf anywhere, it took on a new identity of value. So I started to connect to this space in a way that a young Jamaican probably shouldn't have. But that was the inspiration of picking up that book. How did that get me here? I was at Brockport in New York doing my master's degree in dance. Because now it's beyond me going to college to go, oh, we could do dance education. I found that there was more to it. So I'm, I'm in graduate school and I meet a professor from UW-Madison who spent the 80s partnering with my professor as a research partner. So she's here doing her research at UW-Madison. He's doing his research in New York. They're touring together as Melrose and Morgan as a shared duo company exploring dance. And I met her there and she invited me here. 
What do you mean, UW Madison? You, you mean the book? <laughs> and so I came here in 2006 for a one year stint. In that first year, I'm walking around the campus because I'm from Jamaica. I'm now in this foreign land. This is not Western New York where I had cohorts and friends. This is the Midwest. It's very different culturally. And so I'm finding spaces where I felt like I belonged, where there was a little reggae music, where there was a little bit of soca music, where there was black cultural expressions. And I'm finding that all across the campus where I'm coming up on these spaces, the events are sponsored by the Office of Multicultural Arts Initiatives. Who are these people? <laughs> Let me find out more about you because this is where I'm feeling most at home apart from my home department at UW-Madison. And in that first year here, we started to have conversations about what would happen if we invested in young people who are doing spoken word. Youth Speaks Wisconsin was new at the time and we were looking at these communities of young artists who were doing spoken word as part of after school program. There was an activist centering to the poetry that these students were doing. So our conversation wasn't so much centered around the art by itself, but what the art could do. If students are writing about things that, that, that is having such deep impact in their communities, what would happen if we brought those students here, invested in those communities, connected that art with this brilliant academy, and center their work in activism. So those became the pillars of the First Wave program. Arts, activism, and academics. And what we were able to do with that investment is bring in 15 students that represent diverse populations on an annual basis, set up the infrastructure to support their curiosities, ensure that they had access to brilliant faculty members at UW-Madison to give them the tools with which they could now deconstruct challenging theoretical ideas through art and communicate that back to their communities. This was an innovative idea at the time, but it's an idea that has become self-fueling. Because First Wave now is run by students or alumni of the program. So the director of the program is from the first cohort. First Wave scholars have graduated to become leaders in many of their fields and innovators in new field. My own research is in dance. My own research is in the idea of the role of the body to create expression. But that work is collaborative. That work is collaborative with space, with other human beings, with stories, and is dependent on an audience to receive it. And so core to that is this idea of how we share how we create spaces for others to share in. So my work is centered really around processes, sharing tools and processes that are self-generating. So when five folks leave the studio, they can go to five other studios and 25 can go and so on and so forth. So that is what inspires me about UW-Madison. That is why I feel like the Wisconsin idea is aligned with my own story and even the work that I do now in the Division of the Arts. As the director of the Division of the Arts, I work to connect the dots across all the different artistic elements at UW-Madison. The arts here exist in four different schools and colleges. The School of Education has dance, theater, and visual arts. College of Letters and Science has music, communication arts, creative writing, etc. The School of Human Ecology has design studies, interior architecture, fashion design. And of course, the School of Business has the Bolt Center for Arts Administration. My office brings that work together, highlights that work, elevate that work, and ensure that all students have access to that work. We're in the business of information. We're in the business of innovation. 
and we're in the business of sharing process that others can continue to inspire and innovate. That is my Wisconsin story. Thank you.